Hello everyone and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com So in this quick tutorial we will go over on how to bake something in the new Marmoset Toolbox 3 So as of the making of this tutorial Marmoset Toolbox 3 came out actually yesterday So it is still a fairly new program for me uh, I wasn't in the beta unfortunately So I still need to play around with it But I have figured out how to do all the baking and I thought I would share it with you guys because there weren't that many tutorials yet online so let's just get started with it so i will not in this case go over the ui yet because well i will probably do that in a different tutorial and also i just want to keep this tutorial short basically quick and easy um, that only goes over the baking so if you just follow my lead everything will be fine so let's get started so if you have Marmoset Toolbag 3 opened, this is just a blank scene that you get. And now if we just go over here to this little icon, which is like a little bread, which I think is fairly clever um, to have this icon. And it says new baker. So if you just press that, here you go. Here we have a new baker group. So we have our baker one, which is our parent. And in there we have a folder with the high and the low poly. Now for this, um, for the purposes of this tutorial I will use a model that I made for a older tutorial for 3D Motive that was actually full course and I think it will be a perfect model for this also this tutorial so I have it here so here in my folder so I just have this on my second screen so if I just drag in my high poly and drag it onto the high poly and big if it did not plug into the high poly you can just drag it in here and as you can see my entire mesh is exploded now for me this is just a preference and this is also because in that other tutorial I used X normal um, but I also like to explode it because you uh, Marmoset has like an automatic cage generator well you can change the cage but basically at some instances it cannot quite catch up for example at very small if something is very dense like over here this is actually well this is one model so it's a bit harder um, to even get it right without exploding but basically for me exploding is a preference because it just fixes those small problems so I don't need to do that in Photoshop or need to change anything in the model so that's why I exploded it you don't need it per se because you can just use a cage but in my case I find that it gives better results so I also want to drag in my low poly and in my case my low poly has all everything just has one smoothing group and um, everything is in the same position as the high poly. So with that done now we have our low and high poly. If we just first go to our low poly in here we have a few of options. So if we go to outer bake we can set um, if you want just a quick outer bake or if you want to have it fill and have it um, very good quality. In here we have show offset, which is showing our cage, and we have show screw, which is showing the direction that our um, vertex normals and everything is pointing at. So with that, um, in here we have our minimum offset and our maximum offset. What you can do is you can sometimes try to estimate the offset and see if that helps, but in my case um, I don't see it to help that much. So you can like you can paint on your model to um, estimate the offset, but what I like to do is I will just clear this. Um, all I need to do is just change our max offset slider, and as you can see with this we can just change the offset of our um, of our cage. So I want to set this to be let's say around here, so 0 0.7 that it just that it comes just above the mesh. And also just make sure at different parts of the mesh that it still comes above fairly nicely, like over here. So with that done, there are two more things. So we have paint offset. If you just press paint offset, in here now we get this little view over here of our um, UV view. And we get this little brush. So you can change the size of the brush. You can also do that with your shortcut. I'm not sure what the keyboard shortcut is because I always use my tablet, but I think it was the same as in Photoshop. Um, flow is um, the intensity that you want the brush to be. And sharpness is how sharp you want the brush to be. If you want to have it a smooth brush 
or a very sharp brush. So you can see that as the soft brush or the hard brush in um, Photoshop. So basically with my size, if I now click on my model, you can see that the cage just wraps around the model closer. Now, if you want to actually extend it, you can just hold control and that will actually extend the cage from your model. And like this, if you have like one small part that you need to be slightly more out, for example, to cover um, some screws or anything, or you're slightly more in, then you do not need to change the entire cage. You can only just change that part. But I'm happy with everything, so I will just clear this. This is just if you get any baking errors often. Paint screw. Um, with this you can paint the direction um, of your cage baking. Uh, I think it was based on vertex normals, I'm not sure. But basically, sometimes if you are using a cage and the cage um, screws are on a flat piece are pointed in different directions. And you have, for example, you have a screw or other detail that is only in the high poly that will bake down into the low poly. Then you often get that you get wrong lighting or it kind of looks like the object on the model is um, tilted. I guess is the right word. So basically, if you look at the demo, you can see that happening. But basically, if you would have over here, if you would have like a little screw or anything, um, that is baking wrong. What you can do is you can just click and drag, and that will um, change your screw direction to be facing forward, like it has over here. Of course, this was already baking forward, so in this case, that was just fine. But here, as you can see, you can see stuff changing. If I just now it wouldn't make sense what I'm doing now, but you can see that the screws are changing. So, like this, you can paint it however you want it which always it is just a very nice thing if you want to bake small objects for example floating objects into your high poly but once again i will clear this yes press done so that was it for all the settings of the low poly in here i can just show my offset only to show the cage which i always like um, high poly doesn't have any settings uh, bake group also doesn't have any settings just the transform but you do not need to touch that it's just the position of the folder with all your high and low polys. Then we have our parent, Bacon 1, which has all the settings. Um, I will just very quickly go over this. So use hidden meshes. If you have a mesh hidden, like over here, when using the eye icon, you can hide it. Um, it will bake all the meshes even if they are hidden. So if you want to have different meshes into these folders, that are some of them are hidden because you don't want to bake them you can literally just untick this and only select the ones and only or unhide or hide the ones that you do not want to bake ignore transforms if you are baking because the high and low poly need to be in the exact same position you always want to just lock your transform so nothing moves around while baking but if you want to have it have your own custom transforms then you can just press this button smooth cage so your cage if is always a bit smoothed so over here if i would set my offset um let's actually copy copy this value before doing this um if i set my offset very high you can see that the cage is always fairly smooth while if i set this off then the cage will be a lot sharper as you can see so i like to have the smooth cage on because it feels like it gives me better results and I just set back my value. Ignore back facing. If you have any open faces, you can just ignore them. But if you also want to have your back faces to curl, for example, um, well, I don't think I actually have a back face in here. But um, for example, in here it's open. Sometimes you have a face pointing the other direction because the face because a plane, for example, is one sided. Then you could just also then you could just bake both sides I guess for stuff like foliage it would be handy I'm not sure I never use it but anyway it's there auto reload if you export your low poly or high poly that is plugged in here it will automatically reload it if you do not want to reload the file automatically you can turn it off or you can manually reload it in here so fairly most things are fairly straightforward and if you Hover above it, you can also get descriptions of pretty much everything. So output, 
you can just set your output which I will do here let's just call this test here we go it will always be a PSD so for me the output will be my desktop size here you can change the texture resolution up to 8k and you can go as low as 64 so I want to set this to 2048 just for the sake of this tutorial I don't need it high samples is the anti-aliasing as far as I know um, the higher samples will give you a smoother result especially on edges no jacked edges um, so for example for a norm map because you want to have the norm map very precise and nice you always, always want to have higher samples but for example for an occlusion map you want everything to be a bit smoother so for an occlusion I personally like to always set that lower so I would set it to 1 um, I will just leave it to 4 for now for because it's just a quick tutorial format speaks for itself how many bits do you want multi-layered um, PSD if you have multiple things selected the multi-layered PSD as far as I know will place everything in one PSD uh, I haven't tried it out yet so I might be wrong so sorry if I ever got anything wrong I didn't try out everything yet because some things I just don't really need often for baking padding padding will be the slight edge that goes around your UVs uh, basically it will extend the bake for like one or two pixels more um, to make sure that you don't get any seams I think moderate is like two pixels and extreme is like six or oh no wait moderate is actually more basically for the padding moderate is most time fine but if you want to have extreme padding where you really want to make sure that there are no seams and everything is very far bakes through very far outside of your um, UVs then you can set this to extreme but moderate is fine maps here are all your maps and I assume if you are baking that you know what maps you need so yeah you have the normal uh, which is your normal map you have the object space normal map um, you have the height map which is just for your bumps and heights position map mainly used in quicksol and substance it will just show the position of your model um, from bottom to top left to right whatever Curvature will highlight the edges on your model. Ambient occlusion is just the occlusion of your model, the shadows you would say of your model. Uh, material ID, you can actually, if you have different color materials assigned to your high poly with the material ID, you can bake those colors down. For example, if you want to make a color map to use for selection in Quixel or in Substance, you can very easily do that in here. Albino map. Uh, specular and gloss map I have not used yet I have not looked at it yet but as far as I know um, it will most likely if you have, have for example um, vertex colors or vertex paint from for example ZBrush in here you can bake those colors into a albedo specular or glossiness map so that's about it um, you can edit your baked map once it is baked um, you can preview your bake map or you can preview the bake map on your low poly mesh in one go but we will go over that later normals you can here flip the normal channels uh, R, G or B so red, green or blue um, for example Unreal always wants you to flip the green channel I don't know why they just do while CryEngine and I believe Marmoset and even Unity do not require that so if you want in here you can just immediately flip your normals but if you go to your material here you also just have the options to flip your green channel or you can even flip it into photoshop height in here you can change the values of your height um, the black and white values to get a better result that's more if you are baking height and you see some errors in here just play around with the values to get more whites in there or stronger whites or stronger blacks depending how strong that you want your height map to be curvature strength how obvious do you want your curvature um, edges to be so the bigger the strength of course the stronger your edges will be in your curvature very straightforward as far as I know occlusion Ray count, the higher the ray count, the better quality your occlusion map will be, but the longer baking will take. So basically I will just set it to this ray count, but if you want to have your 
a very final occlusion it's always nice to just boost this up to 512 for example or maybe even higher um, or oh, it even says higher quality but will increase bake times floor occlusion, occlusion um, will provide floor occlusion simulated if you have your model and you export it with a plane below it and the plane has UVs it will actually also just bake your model on onto the floor um, and with the floor you will just have a bit more um, settings a bit more control on how far do you want the occlusion from your model to go onto the floor plane so you can like you can just take this on if you want and in here you can set the strength of the occlusion on the floor two-sided is same as um, back face curling if you want to bake it on two sides um, even if it even if it's like a plane that only has one side and ignore groups i'm not really sure what that means i haven't tried it out yet um, ignoring groups of high poly source meshes for occlusion baking permitting all groups to cast occlusion onto one another um, it looks like it's something that for the occlusion you can set um, in here if you have groups in here i believe um, to make sure that some objects do not occlude on top of other objects I'm not sure, I haven't used it yet, but it seems like that's it So, that was it for the settings um, I tried to keep this tutorial short, we are already on 16.3 minutes So I will just go on with the baking and then we will wrap this up So basically, if we um, now would bake um, We also have this little button over here so this button will automatically create a material for you and show it on your low poly as soon as your bake is done and it will automatically plug in the norm map occlusion map or any other map that you bake with it now in this case because i have my mesh exploded i do not want to have it on my low poly so i have like this little final mesh so if i just select this go to view frame selection here you see here's my final mesh um, that has the same uvs as my exploded mesh so in here I would be able to see my normal map. So with the baker, what I want to do is I still want to press this because it will make it material for me which I can just drag onto here. Now you can press bake to first start baking and then press this button. But if you just press this button it will automatically start the baking process. So I will start this button and then I will pause the video until the baking is done. So the normal map baking will be very fast in my set. It's like one second, but the AO baking will take a bit longer. So if I press this, because I'm telling you this now, because my PC will slow down a lot as soon as it starts baking the normal map. So let's press this. And now the baking process is starting. As you can see, you will see a pop-up of the normal, of I mean of the AO. Make sure to actually check the AO map um, or any other map that you want. So now let's start the baking process. So that is how fast the normal map is. Normal map already baked. So if I now press baking, and here is the norm map. Uh, here's the AO bake. Okay, so the baking is done now. So I can just hide my baker. Um, as you can see, it made a material with automatically the norm map and the occlusion map into its slot and now it's time to apply to our models and see how it goes so as you can see here is our ugly low poly model with weird smoothing groups um, not much detail everything looks fairly low poly if you go to our wireframe you can also see so this is the poly count for our model um, and now let's apply our material so this is actually this is always my favorite part to just bam see it like looking good hopefully We'll see, but um, this baker, I really like the baker of mom said it is a really good baker. So I, it, I think it will actually be my standard baker for personal projects. So if I just drag this material onto my model, and bam, here is our, here is our um, baked occlusion and norm map on our shader. So what I will actually do, so it looks really good already. I want to just ramp up the gloss, lower down the um color a bit and let's set this actually to metalness because that's the one i'm used to it's the color slightly higher and now let's have a look around if you press space you can hide the ui 
So everything looks really good. All the edges are nice and smooth, which uh, catches up really well, even for edges that are completely harsh, hard or harsh. I'm not sure what the word is. For example, here this is it has no bevel. So the bigger edges I like to always give a bevel. But this one, no bevels and still a very smooth result. So really nice. Even also the screws. So the screws um, are also just low poly, but it still shows that in. So if I hold shift, I can rotate the sky and I can just see the light interacting with my normal. Um, on top of here, so this is also not actual geometry. Or uh, yes, not actual geometry. And uh, the bay came out immediately very well. So this is actually the first time I baked this model. I literally dove into the deep with this baker when showing you guys. So it's not like I did a test run or anything. Um, I see some very small problems over here, but that's easily fixable or in Photoshop, or I can just have a look at my mesh. But um, since this isn't a full tutorial, I will not do that. For the rest, everything seems to be, everything seemed to came out really well. Also my floating geometry on top of here. And uh, again the screws, everything is very nice and smooth. Even the screws in here are baked really well. So I didn't even have to do the um, screwing on here, luckily. And over here also all these cylinders, it just came out really well. So that was it for the baking. You can just bake any map you want and continue texturing. I personally really like the baking. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Fantastic result. Um, congrats to mom set for releasing their new tool it is amazing um, so yeah my name is Emil Slikers and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com